The meeting of the Dudley Charlton Regional School Committee is now in session. It's Wednesday, August 16th, and it is 7 p.m. All stand for the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our regular meeting of Wednesday, July 20, July 12th. So moved. Second. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the executive session on Wednesday, July 12th. Second. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Uh, do we have another from the last time? Remember, do we have the over one? Oh. Were we supposed to vote on it tonight? Yeah. Did we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm doing something. Because I had a question, so we're going to and move it, the next yeah, one. Right. It's and, okay. We just don't know the date. It was date. okay, we just but need we didn't approve it. Uh, that must have been the late June 28th? June 28th. I'm going to make a motion to accept the executive session minutes of June 28th. Second. Second, sorry. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. This is remember the last yeah. time. No, that. I know exactly when. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Uh, that brings us to the warrant. Do we have a warrant this evening? I did not see one. Richard? No. No. Okay. We do I'm not. not spending any money. <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual. I know. <laughs> Uh, citizens Forum. This evening, do we have anyone that would like to come and speak with us? No. <laughs> Communications. Mr. Desto. Uh, none for me, Mrs. O'Coin. Okay, and there's none for me. How about our members? Uh, Elaine. I do have a communication from um, Dave Smolsky, who's a parent in Charlton. Um, he had actually written to the three members from um, Charlton regarding uh, safety concerns on Center Depot Road um, and I'm, it's easier for me to just read it um, I'm a Charlton resident and I'm writing to you about public safety concerns on our street Center Depot Road I have particular concern for the safety of my children who are both students in our district simply put people frequently walk run and ride bicycles on our street but the width of the road and lack of sidewalks combined with driver's excessive speed and lack of attention seems like a deadly combination. I've been in touch with Interim Chief of Police Dan Charette since around May of this year. I've provided him with numerous examples of unsafe driving behavior on our street. Here is a sample. Student safety. Before school let out in June, I was waiting for my youngest son to get off the bus in the afternoon. Just before the bus stopped, I saw a white convertible import accelerate to beat the bus when he saw the bus flashers. Student safety. Some drivers rev their engines or accelerate when they see kids waiting for the bus in front of houses on our street. As a pedestrian, I was walking our dog when a speeding truck swerved at the last second when he was passing us. The mayor of his truck came about a foot from hitting me in the head. What if this had been a child walking down the side of the road? After the serious accident at the intersection of Center Depot Road and Stafford Street on July 22nd, Chief Charette informed me he believes that the situation requires action beyond the scope of his department's capability and that he is in touch with town officials. With school starting later this month, I think the town of Charlton, Charlton's members of the school board need to be aware of this public safety issue, especially considering the district's pledge to advance the knowledge and well-being of our children in our community. I hope we can count on your support to address this issue with the town of Charlton and welcome the opportunity to discuss this wish issue with you and the and or the board and he left his contact information so I did reach out to him to let him know that I would you know between all of us we would bring the matter to the attention of the board tonight to d discuss the issue do we, do we have an issue with a bus stop there or is it primarily about the way people are driving this is the first I hear okay. of it um, the, the only thing I can say is uh, we can certainly talk to the bus company and see if they have cameras that are pointing out to be able to get cars, you know, passing by when, when flashers are on. That's about the only thing I can suggest and how with about the hearing this too? just now. The police should be, you know, 
Yeah, certainly we can reach out to Chief Charette and, um, you know, request patrol during, you know, especially during the busy times in the morning and in the afternoon. Mike, the one thing I think we control most strongly, though, is where the kids get the bus. And that's something I'd like to take a look at and see if there's somewhere where we can move the kids and make sure that they're in as safe a position as possible. Maybe there's something there that we can do as well. <laughs> because that is a serious issue, and I think. I'm assuming that Mr. Smolsky's children are in the elementary grades, and I'm not, I'm not too sure, but in the elementary grades, aren't we stopping driveway to driveway to pick up students versus as the students get older, the high school students, they all congregate in a bus stop area, I think. You know that could speak to the issue on Center Depot Road. It is, you know, it is a pretty busy street, but I support your thought of reaching out to the police to see if there's possibility of increasing patrols, but perhaps a communication with bus drivers because that's the main transport. All of the buses are going up and down that road to go in and out of the yard to just be aware and kind of communicate their concerns to traffic issues and maybe. Um, you know, if it's somebody that's commuting to and from work that's on the road at the same time and it's the same white car that's doing this, maybe right. we can, you know, be a little bit more targeted in how we're there addressing our concerns. Are there a lot of students on that road where the bus can go door to door to pick them up just on that road? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure on the elementary yeah. runs. Uh, yeah. But generally. That's a big concern. His, old, old, his oldest comes here. He's in uh, sixth grade sixth with grade. Jacob. Okay. Okay. So, so we we'll just, look into it. We will. To yeah. see if we can Definitely. Do. Thank you. Uh, through the chair. Um, I was contacted uh, by a couple of people last night and today regarding last night's Charlton Selectman meeting. Um, if you don't know, last evening, Charlton Selectman voted and approved the extension of a contract with Mark Abrams to do a feasibility study on Charlton separating itself from the Dudley Charlton Regional School District. Uh, Mr. Abrams is currently uh, contracted by the town to do a study on state funding disbursements. And he'll be uh, extended to look at this other, uh, do this other study. Uh, first, let me say I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that this topic was on the agenda for the selectmen, and we were not contacted or uh, made aware of it, uh, because I thought that uh, the district or school committee members from Charlton uh, could have been involved in the conversation. Uh, there were many things discussed last evening, and I just want to clarify a few things for anybody watching our meeting tonight. Uh, Charlton does not pay twice as much per student uh, versus Dudley as suggested by Mr. Singer. Um, Charlton does pay more per student. Uh, actually, the percentage is about 22%, and that is dictated by the state's wealth formula. Uh, and that number would not change if even if Charlton were its own separate district. Uh, it's based on the formula, and that's what we would pay per student. Uh, not mentioned uh, would be if we were to do this, um, there is no high school. There would be a $50 million plus cost to build a building uh, to do this. Uh, I guess I'm not against looking to see what those costs were because I think it will open everybody's eyes. But, uh, you know, this was put on their agenda to say the school are creating the need for a 2.5% override. Uh, the 2.5% override is not only going to fund, help fund the school district, but fire, police, um, you know, highway, library, uh, it's going to help the town as a whole. Um, also talked about was forming a group to look into this deregionalization. Uh, and Mr. Singer demanded that no sitting school committee member be allowed to be part of this group, uh, based on the fact that it would be a conflict of interest. Um, let me just say that the school committee members here are elected by our townspeople. It is not a paid position, uh, and I see no conflict due to that. Uh, our first priority is to provide a quality education for our students, uh, and I would welcome the chance to serve on that committee or group if it were available. Um, lastly, I just want to say I think the timing of this uh, last night was very disruptive. We have school starting in a couple of weeks. You now have parents who are wondering what's going to happen. Are my kids going to have a high school to go to in a couple of years? Uh, I think we're going to start seeing a lot of phone calls into the office uh, questioning this. Uh, what is disturbing is that, you know, earlier in the year we held a couple of meetings which the selectmen were invited to to discuss the current budget and moving forward into this next year's budget. 
Uh, of those two meetings, only one selectman showed up for one meeting from Charlton. Uh, so, you know, that would have been a perfect time to have these discussions, uh, to go over this and look to the future, but it wasn't taken up at that point in time, and I just found the timing on this to be, as I said, disruptive. That's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, this has happened before. Back maybe the late 80s, early 90s, they had the same concern. I think, I don't know if they had an official consultant, but they came back with the results that financially it would be disastrous. Mm -hmm. So I think if they do their homework, they'll probably see that they couldn't get a better deal for what oh, they're I, getting I right now. But let them look and let them see so they have the proof. But I know this is not, this is reared its head before. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway. But just, uh, I kind of want to, um, share some thoughts on uh, and comments on that so to follow through with some of the things that mr chalk and Ms. kabbalah have have talked about um there is there is a encouragement and a push in the state for school for school districts to regionalize not de-regionalize but to regionalize for the the pure benefit of cost savings. Um, I've been on the committee for several years. We've worked diligently the last three plus four years as far as having joint financial meetings, trying to work with our boards to discuss what our issues are. I think going back to the last override um, request in 2013 um, for the two and a half override, there has continued to be this level of, of misstated facts or misunderstanding of the found, you know, of the funding formula for schools. It's not a simple top topic. It's a very complex topic. It would be easy to say that it's a simple fix by just switching, but there isn't. So, you know, to, to Mr. Chalk's point in, in reiterating some of the things that would need to be considered, and I'm sure as Mr. Abrams, you know, continues the work um, that he's doing, th this would come to light in a way that perhaps will not only educate um, the town boards, but will help help to educate the citizens of the town that also have, you know, been under this cloud of not really understanding and having listened to things that are not correct. Um, the funding formula is very complex, and there is a benefit that the towns you know receive in being being a regionalized district for one thing we receive transportation reimbursement which does not happen if you're a single district school district so the cost of busing which I'm sure mr. Matthew can explain is hundreds of thousands of dollars that the district receives to handle the cost of busing we have an administration that would need to be duplicated if the towns were to split uh, Mr. Chalk, I believe, is conservative in saying that a new high school would be $50 million. I know we have, correct me if I'm wrong, applied 12 times for renovation of our high school and have not been successful in receiving state funding. It would be highly unlikely that the town of Charlton would receive any funding mechanism to build a new high school, and $50 million, in my estimation, is conservative. Um, but similar to joining together in a relationship, similar to a couple or a marriage, you have assets that you put together and you have liabilities that you need to split. And one of the considerations that most people are not thinking is our OPEB liability, Charlton would have to buy us out of the OPEB liability in order to de-regionalize. Again, you know, going back to the two and a half attempt that was made in 2013, and, and this is the timing of this is in sync with conversations that I know Mr. Desto has started, that we have started to have regarding the funding future of the district and the towns and how we can be working together for the community and the district as a whole to be um, planning for the future and be healthier. Um, but with, with this um, communication that came, came in, in 2013, the conversation of want versus need. Um, the, the district, in my experience, and Mrs. Caballa and Mrs. O'Coin have been on the committee for quite a long time, the district has always been very conservative in what we try to put forth and what we request for the towns. But 
the wealth formula is something in the funding mechanism for education has been very much in the news the last two years. There has been a Foundation Budget Review Commission to try and address the funding formula, but the wealth mechanism is an issue that Mr. Desto, myself, Mr. Chalk, Mrs. Antossi, we went to several meetings earlier this spring to bring to the board's attention the fact that there had been a legislative you know, bill put forth to look at the wealth formula and the funding mechanism. So, you know, there, there are things that this, you know, um, look into funding formula, I think it's for an educational um, exercise for our, our boards, for the communities to understand it, I think is a great thing, and I, I'm happy that they're looking at this mechanism to do it. Um, I hope in their study they're also going to see the benefits that they receive, aside from the things that I mentioned, that because we have two towns that are quite different, and Dudley brings to the table an economic and cultural diversity that brings us federal funding that allows those resources to be shared or get between both communities. So we see we receive great benefit from being partnered with Dudley. The cost per student has nothing to do about what our students are receiving or not receiving. That number, which is derived from a state funding formula, is specifically related to what the Commonwealth has decided an individual town's assets and ability to pay are. It has nothing to do with anything else. So I think, you know, furthering this study for that to become clearer, to have that understanding, um, I think it is beneficial. I think, you know, the concern that um, I think many of us also surprised, I know Mr. Singer brought this to the Board of Selectmen back in June. Um, I waited for it to be at the July meeting. It was not. Mr. Singer was not in attendance. It was brought to last night's meeting where we were not aware of it. I think the district has always looked to be extremely collaborative, be very open in looking to want to share and discuss these things. So um, I, I, I want to just um, continue to open the doors that we're here, we want to talk. I know Mr. Desto has been in communication with both town administrators. I know we have a plan for a meeting to be here, to Mr. Chalk's point. I certainly hope that we have greater and fuller attendance um, with, with our select boards, our finance boards, so that we can discuss this issue. I guess my only concern is, is that we understand the realities. We communicated them quite openly over the last budget cycle that there is a need for, for additional funding on the parts of the towns um, to support the district, uh, to support their local governments. They are, they are intertwined in ways that we cannot separate them out. Um, I hope that this doesn't derail those conversations and the work that we need to do going forward as we um, look for the preparation of the 2019 budget. Um, I think if anything that is going to give greater awareness to the fact that the expenses and the need to raise revenue will be even greater than the override conversations that we're looking for for the 2019 budget. Um, so it's, I think if we walk away with anything tonight, um, I hope that um, our meeting, if we're ready and we're broadcasting our meetings, that we can have this forward and we're using this as a tool to help um, continue to communicate to the citizens, but I hope that everyone in the community recognizes that there is such a strong passion with the school committee, with our superintendent, with our administration for the education of students in the district. Um, that we want to work together with our town boards. Um, you know, we embrace their exploration of, of the topic, um, but I hope that it doesn't derail us from the work that we need to do during the year because this study will take time and it will, you know, we need to have that analysis. Mr. Abrams has already done an analysis. 
regarding the the funding we have you know, we're sitting down at the table to discuss you know Charlton and Dudley's capacity and and what we can look at going forward and continue to work together I certainly hope that it doesn't derail us from those conversations Thank you, anyway. anyone else okay any other communications all right then we go to superintendent's report mr Desto. thank you mrs o'coin <clears throat> and i would like to begin uh, by giving my take as a superintendent on the comments that mr chalk and mrs rabbit made which are all very well said um, i've been contacted by a number of people today out of concern are we going to be okay that type of thing and so i, I really feel like i need to comment on this and um this i'm gonna start with this this is like this work that we do is not like just a job for us. I mean, we real. This is really important to us, um, and I want to be very clear from the start about one thing: we're not worried about the cohesion of our school district or, or about our region because we're as strong as we've ever been, and we know we're going to be that way going forward. Uh, we feel good about that. That being stated, when I got the news about last night's selectman meeting, I too was disappointed. But I want to be clear: I wasn't disappointed because the selectmen have decided to take a step to unturn every single stone in looking for financial relief. We can't begrudge anybody for that. We, we would do the very same thing. And it's about the timing, as both Mr. Chalk and uh, Mrs. Rabbit mentioned. That's, that's what uh, I was disappointed in. We had, I just want to reiterate something Mr. Chalk mentioned. We had several meetings last year with our town leaders to discuss the state of budgets for all entities. Those meetings were productive. And as I recall, and please correct me if I'm wrong, we, we agreed on three things primarily. One was that the school district and the towns are both desperately in need of more revenue and an override is the most likely um, mechanism by which to achieve that. If we want to continue to thrive, we've got to do it. We've hit a breaking point. That was number one. Number two is that an override, while it may end up being structured for the school district, is equally necessary for the towns because every dollar that's for us is one that goes back that they don't have to give to the schools that they then put back into their operations. And perhaps most importantly, my recollection, and it's a pretty powerful recollection, is that we agreed we would all send the message together that this is necessary. And so I felt like, uh, intentional or not, and knowing the people on that board and as many good people in that room last night, it probably was not intentional. But whether it was intentional or not, it, it gave a, a message of division to many people in our district whom I heard from today. Um, so I want to be very clear again and this is very important that this school committee our leadership team our school district does not feel one bit divided from either of our towns we want to work with our selectmen our town leaders to make these communities the best we all live here too we love it here we love the people who live here and all of us uh, who live here together we serve the same people so without each other's cooperation uh, none of us is ever going to be truly and fully successful so again to summarize i'm not worried about our region the Dudley Charlton Regional School District has served this community very well for 40 plus years and we're going to continue to do that for a very long time. In my opinion, the only question that should linger is how we're going to keep everyone moving forward at a time when resources are on all sides are so thin. And I think we can only effectively answer that question one way and that's together. So yeah, we're disappointed, but our students need us to look forward, not backward. And so we're going to continue to work with whomever in the towns will work with us toward a long-term solution, and we'll be reaching out on that in the very near future. Thank you. Well done. Does that well done. Thank you. Well done. Does that conclude your superintendent's report? Unfortunately, no. I have more. <laughs> <laughs> that was more of a speech, and I apologize. I, I need one of those teleprompters. As I get older, I'm not able to memorize them like I used you to. My good goodness. Talk. Um, so well just, I do have just a couple other quick things. Uh, they're very just informational. One is that as the committee is aware, opening day festivities for the upcoming school year are scheduled for Monday, August 28th at Shepherd Hill. Uh, we'll have a light breakfast and conversation from 7.30 to 8.10. You don't have to have the conversation or the breakfast for that matter, but that's from 7.30 to 8.10. And our whole district meeting will be from 8.15 to 9.45. And of course, all of our school committee members are welcome. All staff in the district will be there. Our district YouTube channel is up and running. Um, right now it only contains our July school committee meeting but we will add this one uh, by the end of this week and also post a link to our web page um, 
there's never been a more important time. I'll say this to anybody who might be watching the meeting. There's never been a more important time for people to be engaged in what's happening in their school district. So um, if you watch the video, you have questions, reach out to us. Uh, we want you to be involved. And um, I want to thank the school committee for way back uh, last year approving the upgrade to our bleachers at Shepherd Hill on the Carmignani, the renovated Carmignani field. Uh, the project is done. It looks fantastic, and it is going to be very well received. I've already had several compliments from people in the community, and I look forward to seeing our people sitting on them rooting for our teams starting this fall. Finally, just a reminder of something I mentioned at the last meeting, which is NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, is going to be offering a course for families whose children may be struggling with mental illness or even showing signs of mental illness. No diagnosis necessary. Um, it's going to be held at Shepherd Hill from September 20th to November 1st. It's a six-week course, and more information will be forthcoming. Um, if anybody hears this and has a particular interest, please continue to check our website, because as soon as we get the enrollment mechanism, we're going to send it out to the community, okay? But we're very happy to be able to bring this program, and hopefully, <coughs> excuse me, in the future others like it, to our community so that our, our families will have the most convenient possible way of getting help. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or anything to say? Okay, we're moving right along. We're, going, uh, we're at new business and a district strategic plan update, Mr. Desco. Thank you, Mrs. O'Coin, and this will be quick. <clears throat> I'll just give everybody an update on our thought process at this time and certainly answer any questions the committee may have, and I am looking to recruit at least two, if not three, uh, of you tonight to help us with the working groups. <clears throat> so my goal tonight simply, <clears throat> excuse me, is to share the vision that was discussed by our administrators at our retreat and uh, as I said, to recruit three committee members to serve on the working groups to create and revise the plan. Uh, that's work that we believe will begin approximately in early to mid-September. We're hoping to change the model away from just, you know, listing <clears throat> essentially things that we have to do to accomplish and starting out more with a, like a model of what competencies do we want our, our graduates to be able to have? So what skills, what uh, you know, hard and soft skills do we want them to have in the categories, perhaps, of cognitive, personal, and interpersonal. Uh, what, what follows from that will, of course, be a, a lot of action steps and things that we have to accomplish, but we are hoping to be able to paint a more clear picture to our communities of exactly what uh, we're, we want to require uh, our students to be able to do when they leave Shepherd Hill, starting when they're in preschool. Um, because obviously everybody in this room knows it's, it's preaching to the choir, but things are changing so dramatically that when we sat down to look at this three years from the first time we looked at it, um, it was all, it's a lot of different, a lot of things are different now, even just three years down the line. So we want to have our kids uh, really truly prepared for colleges, careers, and the world in general. Um, I think we have to look at it, but we believe that we have to look at it more from a standpoint of what our kids are able to do and who they are when they leave us. Uh, so if we can begin by mid-September, because so much of the groundwork is already laid, I believe we can have it in place by Thanksgiving. I really do. And uh, just to be clear, we're not looking to change every single thing that was in our original strategic plan, uh, just sort of the model of it. And there will be, of course, some new ideas there, too, because there have to be for our kids. So that's pretty much the, the plan right now. Um, my plan would be to reach out to the committee within the next couple of weeks and just keep you notified about when that first working uh, day will be. And uh, hopefully I can have three of you to, we're expecting it's going to break down into three groups like it did last time. And we'd like to have one member on each team. If Do possible. you want to, uh, me to appoint this evening? Or? That would be great, um, as long as you don't have to force anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but Mary is in here. And Mary's not here, too, yeah. She, so Mary gave me strict next... orders not to volunteer for all the subcommittees tonight. <laughs> <laughs> she did? Did you really? Did you really? But she that? was kidding and not referring to the strategic plan. <laughs> She's uh, <laughs> well, is the next meeting too late? Um, it will, it might, be. Yeah. it might be. So we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did Mary do it last time? Oh, she was on the committee at the time. Mm -hmm. She wasn't on the she committee. Was on the she committee wasn't at the time. Well, who would like to do I'll, it? I'll do it. Okay. And uh, so we need two others. <laughs> Anybody? I will. Um, 
throw my name into the hat. Um, but I, I have a question if you can come back to me. Okay. Anyone else? I get three, I'll do it. Yeah, I think you were last time. I was too. Yeah. And no, so um, tentatively, and then it, when Mary gets back, if she wants to switch with someone, we can do that. Okay. Or Stephanie, Stephanie, smiling. Do you want to do <laughs> Stephanie? Know. No, um, I, I will if nobody else. Wants. Okay. It's fine. So we, as of this evening, we have three. Nobody have four. Uh, you have, you we have four. four. We have four. So uh, Joe, uh, oh, it's Joe's, Rabbit. Joe's no. Rabbit. Joe's definite. Okay, Joe, Stephanie, and Elaine. That's fine. Okay. That's Kathy. Well, I think it's Joe, Elaine, Mary, then <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of how I took Mrs. Reed's, you know, implication in her conversation there. So I would I would ask Mrs. Antossi and just, if not, okay. then I would just well, let me, go let to Let me ask Mrs. about the feasibility of this regarding you know, open meeting law and all that. If I were to provide between this meeting and the next um, more information specific to when we want to meet, the times, what kinds of work would be done, that might narrow it down a little bit. Is there some way we can do that without um, having to do it at the next meeting, which, we, which could be after our first strategic plan meeting? Well, I believe if you were to put out there that information, mm -hmm. but not have received any responses back. Yeah. You're just notifying of that. So basically I'm giving the information and seeing who eliminates themselves at that point because they well, see that well, they, they maybe can't, I think just can't we, discuss I, I just think tentatively we've got our team and then Mary, it depends. Elaine said you would so, like to relate to me. I, I, you know, even if you were to have two members on one committee, it's not a quorum. It's not. Right. So I think it, if you put that there are four members and then, right. you know, these are the committees, these are when they're meeting, okay. um, this is what we're looking to do, someone might need to eliminate themselves just based on, on work schedules and, and when people can participate okay. or not participate. Um, so, so I, I would put Mary think in for now. That but if you have four in the same room at the same, same time, time, even if there's three meetings, we're right. all in the same room, you're going to have to post it as a meeting. That's well, I all. Think we're just post do that it. Anyway. Just I post really it. You have seven with the post. Because there's really no, as long as you post it. Yeah, you can have all uh, of us could be legal. on it. It's legal. You can have everyone come. Yeah. Okay. Don't That's open it. meetings. And Mary may simply say, she doesn't oh, no, want thank you. She's too busy. But as long as it's posted, it's posted as a meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Just as a follow-up question, I, I, I am curious as to how you're going to be soliciting um, community input because I feel very strongly that we need to be engaged with our community as far as what they're looking for, especially you know going forward. And the initial process when we did it in 2012 was over 110 people in the room, and mm -hmm. it was business, it was higher education, it was um, you know town government things like that. So. I'm not necessarily looking to put 110 people back in right. the room, but if we could solicit, maybe do um, some online surveys and, and, and look for contributions in, in that realm. I know Mrs. Allen's very good at SurveyMonkey now. <laughs> um, putting some things together, I, I certainly don't want to, I don't want to move forward with a strategic plan without soliciting yep. input from, from other people. Um, so let me so. just say, what we left the room the, the district office administrators, our homework mm -hmm. is to get some people from the business world, uh, the colleges, and the community to be involved mm -hmm. physically. I, I like the idea of, a, of an online survey as mm -hmm. well. Um, I do, we do want to avoid having massive numbers again, but we definitely do want to have some outreach both physically and, I, like I said, I like the idea of uh, putting together some kind of an electronic survey where people can have at least, if they want, um, some input. Well, I know that all of our schools are doing activities at the beginning of the year that between open house or, you know, parent teacher conferences very early on in the season. I know I've seen emails from everybody's doing, you know, freshmen come in before everybody else type of thing. I think there's ways to publicize this yeah. even with our initial sporting events, our our theater events to let people know that it's there and that we certainly want to hear from them. And if it's a survey that they can fill out online, I think it's sure. even easier for people to do. Yep. Um, I think it's beneficial to us as a whole. Yeah, we can fire up the Chromebooks at any open house or whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Perfect. We got a few more now. Are those videos going today? <laughs> <laughs> Are those um, going to be doing the day because before they were? So it's really a combination, but primarily like after four o'clock. Okay. Because like some of the elementaries will do like a four thirty to six or okay. something like that. Because that's different. The last yeah. time we actually met. The day. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're thinking, I'm, I'm, thinking I'm sorry. I thought you meant like the open houses and things. Like no, that. no. I'm talking about this. The yeah, actual, that, the, that's the actual to be determined based on availability. I would think that we would try to get it done, maybe catch a little bit of the afternoon and then a lot of after school time okay. if possible. Um, but it may we may find that that's not feasible. So that's sort of still to be determined. So that's obviously an impact for me. I, yeah. Right. You know, I'd have to. I, have I, to I want to be part of it, yes. but. I, we can find a way to have you be part of it. Okay. We we can we'll work with you, John, okay? Because we want Thank to. Do we, it, so. Yeah, we should. I mean, we can't schedule if they're it's working right. every day. It should. And be. There, there is a, a time when the groups, the three set, if it turns out to be three separate groups, they'll work independently too. Right. Um, they'll have their own time, so um, there's even more flexibility in a smaller number. Plus, you know, my feeling that you shouldn't be pulling teachers out of the classroom to do yeah. this because then you're right. leaving the kids behind. So right. it's better if it is after school. After school. Okay. Okay, so we're all set. We have four. Okay. And that brings us up to Director of Finance and Operations update, uh, Mr. Matthew. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do with the committee's uh, permission is uh, to introduce our new food service director uh, in the district. As the committee is aware, um, uh, uh, the long-serving uh, um, food service director, Andreas uh, Paniyatu, has retired just as I learned how to pronounce his last name. Um, <laughs> uh, the district was lucky uh, to secure the services of Karen Chinaki, uh, who's here this evening. Karen, if you'd like to stand up. Um, Karen has served as a food service director in Massachusetts um, for over a decade, serving uh, in Tewksbury for over seven years, a district very similar to, uh, to us in terms of size, uh, along with seven schools. So she's, she's familiar with the challenges of being visible in seven different places all at once, uh, which is a great skill, and we look forward to seeing that. Um, and has already started, um, you know, working in the district and uh, is taking the reins, uh, so to speak. Um, so I introduce Karen. Uh, Karen, I don't know if you, if you want to, to have you on board. Say one, two, Very happy to be here. Um, I'm thoughts or, or needs that you might be aware of that I could work through for you? It's a tough do job, but it's good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I have a great recipe for fettuccine alfredo. However, <laughs> I don't think the sauce would meet the requirements of the federal government. I think it would be a little bit uh, too much fat in it. That fettuccine alfredo. <laughs> sure, I'll figure Do you out. have any free samples? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So hopefully just to um, you know, continue uh, to serve the students, uh, be visible. Um, I like to go out um, during the lunch periods at various locations, talk to the students um, from here to here um, to get feedback um, on what they might be liking or disliking, vamp up the look of, of the lines, um, you know, with, with serving bowls and things that um, will make it look more homey. Uh, those types of things and um, I'm familiar with the state and and the regulations so I'll make sure that um, you know everything is um, up to snuff when uh, they might visit again and that type of thing. Thank so, you. Good. That's good. Welcome. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you have awesome. a long and happy career with us. Yeah, there, there certainly are, are no shortage of opportunities in this particular area, so uh, I think it can be an exciting time for us. Thank you. Um, next up, uh, we have donations. Um, the Shepherd Hill Regional High School has received uh, two donations, um, per my memo. One from the Kula Foundation, um, not foundation, but foundation, uh, which is a, a Red Robin entity in the amount of $22.52, and the other from Your Cause in the amount of $20. Additionally, um, I had two donations that came into my office after this memo was prepared. Uh, another one from the Kula Foundation for the Charlton Elementary School in the whopping total of 92 cents. Um, and a third one for the Shepherd Hill Regional High School um, in the amount of $2,128.17 um, from the DC Gridiron uh, for the uh, athletic uh, equipment, a sled for, for the football program. Oh, that was very nice. 
So I'll entertain a motion to accept the donation set forth by Mr. Matthew. So moved. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, next up on the uh, in the memo is surplus equipment. Um, in your in your packets, there was a, a, t a memo with uh, information printed on both sides. One with the Shepherd Hill Regional uh, High School request to get rid of actually a vending machine um, uh, that is in, in disrepair and no longer working, and uh, from Dudley Middle School uh, a list of uh, textbooks. Did we get that list? You yeah, should. You should have. No, oh. it's not that online. Online. Uh, here. It's in here. Oh, okay. Sounds like. Oh, thank you. The back side. And, and in keeping with what seems to be the the committee's desire, we'll make sure to make these uh, books available to students before we actually dispose of them. I'd like to motion we approve the, um, <clears throat> the non-working vending machine and the books for Dudley Middle School. Second. Any discussion on it? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, just a piece on the FY17 budget. Uh, I'll bring forward the, uh, the final report for uh, the FY17 to the next meeting. I do expect some journal entries, uh, I mean some uh, budget adjustments uh, to be required between cost centers. But the good news is uh, at this time I project that we'll be able to replenish our E&D fund um, from the, with the funds that we used from F to support the FY18 budget. So that, that fund should so get built back up. That, that's very good news, yes. Um, another piece of good news for, from the FY17 budget is that our regional transportation revenue uh, was finalized by the state and uh, we have received $39,180 more than budgeted um, per the committee's um, creation of the Regional Transportation Revolving Fund. That surplus will flow into there and be available for um, either to support either the FY18 budget or uh, the FY19 budget. Which leads me to the bad news of the FY18 budget, <laughs> um, where the final numbers that were released by the state uh, had our regional transportation um, short by 29,686. Uh, as a result, my recommendation to the committee is that we take these funds from the Regional Transportation Revolving Account, revolving truly in and out, um, to support our budget and, re and keep it whole. And you wanted to keep that additional money? Uh, Here, where I see it, the balance. is it 29686 Yes, that, that's the amount that's the And amount that's that. in the, is that in the reserves transportation? Yes, Am exactly. Am I reading across right? Yep. Okay. And it doesn't change our budget. It doesn't at all, change our, so our budget. I don't at all think we need a in this respect. On that. Okay. So the committee's just made aware well, of that. Our budget still remains the same. Yeah. I think we should vote just to show where the money came from, just as a matter of record. That's a very good idea. I'll I make a motion that we take. It won't hurt to do yeah, it. Yeah, it's better yeah. to have a record where it came from. So we would take um, 29,686 from the revolving account, which we just put in 39,180. Right. To Reduce to make the and budget the same. Kathy, to keep the budget the same. Yeah, it makes it Second. one million six hundred forty thousand six hundred seventy-five, and then twenty-nine six eighty-six is the amount. Okay. So any? Um, do I have a second? I had a motion. A second. Any other discussion on it? Seeing none. All in favor? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we now get to the fun part of the evening. Um, when the state did release its final um, Chapter 70 numbers, <clears throat> they made a change to uh, some of the fact, to some of the things that we were talking about earlier. Um, the uh, wealth factor, the income uh, percentage, and the property percentage that they use embedded in their formula to create the required school spending numbers um, for both Dudley and Charlton. As a result of this change, um, and as a result, or due to the timing of it, meaning that it wasn't finalized until you know July 20th or 21, whatever the date was, but well past our town meetings, the di the district ha and the school committee has three options before it to deal with this. The first option um, would be to vote to revise the assessments um, per the formula and per our, our computations. 
and that would result in asking charlton for an additional thirteen thousand four hundred ninety seven dollars and would result in but, but that would require charlton to have a town meeting and appropriate those funds to us um, there would be a, a corresponding savings to the town of dudley if we were to choose that option the second option would be to vote to lower the approved budget um, in an amount that would keep the charlton assessment where they voted it and that would ultimately provide a reduction to Dudley. The amount of that reduction would be 25414 but we would have to re lower our budget by that 25414 And then the third option would be to keep the assessments as voted, uh, as approved at town meeting, and as approved by the school committee um, in, during the budget process in May. What's the downside so, of that? Um, well, the if we were to keep it that way, it could be perceived from the town of Dudley that we we didn't provide them the relief that was possible. Now we're not talking about a great deal of money, but I I will remind the, the committee, and, and I'm sure you're all very aware that Dudley did um, willingly, you know, go go into its coffers and make a lot of budget changes to to meet our, our assessment. I think in good faith we should go with the 25,000 return to Dudley. That's my opinion. Yeah, what are the six? I'm going to make a motion we lower the approved budget by $25,414, which would keep the Charlton assessment the same but lower the Dudley assessment by that amount. Correct? Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Could I suggest a, a, a sure. friendly amendment to that um, with the reduction coming to the contingency expenditure account? Add that. <laughs> Coming from the contingency account, which is what? Which is what? <laughs> the, the, the contingency account that we have in our budget. So, which is how much? It would still leave about seventy-five thousand. Okay. Okay. So we still. So it's. I think it's good faith. It wasn't our. We didn't change the assessments. This is from the states. So we had no idea this was coming. Right. So we have to make that clear. We did not know this until last week. Basically. Until, no, until the numbers were. But since right. this is available, twenty-five thousand is a lot of money in a town, in a small it, town. Right. So I think it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. This doesn't change our budget. No. no this it, doesn't, it, we don't have to cut anything to give this back. We would not be cut. We would be yes, reducing the, uh, the contingency line item within our budget, and our new budget would go down to forty nine million nine twenty five sixty four. From the bottom line, forty nine down to twenty five thousand nine forty five. Okay. That we don't we don't lose anything, technically, but. You know, but it does reduce our budget. I think you should explain that. Yeah, how can we not lose something? Well, giving, it, 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 I, a better way to say it would yeah, be I that think. it doesn't result in us cutting anything, any services, or well, any we staff. Are subtracting twenty five. Right. right. Yes. Right. Yeah. There's no direct impact. We're, we're not reducing staff. We're not um, reducing any of the individual schools' budgets. Uh, we're not asking for anybody to do without anything that they would have otherwise done. We're basically taking. That contingency account is there for emergencies, um, so we're just reducing our our pot of money for emergencies. If I can just add something to what you're saying, Mr. Matthew, and pardon me for being uh, obsessive about detail, because I think it's important for people to not think that we have a whole bunch of money squ squandered off to the side and that our budget isn't designed to be extremely realistic and, and reflective of cost. If I do quick mental math, you have a contingency account that possibly had about $100,000 in it for emergencies. And I want people to understand $100,000 based on a $49 million budget is not a whole lot of money that we've been sitting aside for an un, you know, unknown expense. It certainly does continue to leave us in the hole should some major thing happen and not have money and we'll, we'll deal with that as those things come up but I just you know in the, in the light of things that are going around and in and, and people recognizing how much very careful thought is put into the budget preparation you know I wholeheartedly agree in the recommendation that we reduce this amount it's not going to currently impact us in any way um, I do believe it's a good faith good faith um, to to the town it doesn't change anything for child and it certainly does um, benefit Dudley um, but I just want to make sure that we are not having this perception out there that we got a whole bunch of money stashed aside that we're not using sorry I just needed to say that 
<laughs> well, to be sure, I, I think this is a problem we have every year because we just don't have all the numbers for our budget mm -hmm. till after we have voted on the budget. Absolutely. So that contingency line has been in there for mm -hmm. that purpose yeah, also. Mm -hmm. So. And we mentioned, uh, if I may, Mrs. O'Coin, when we met with our senators and representatives, that if there were one thing other than just having more money available to give the districts that they could do to really help us with this process, it would be to speed up mm -hmm. the final decisions to, uh, if we just, we go into this, as you all know, uh, with such uncertainty. And it's, it's very frustrating, but uh, <coughs> fortunately this time the, the change wasn't enormous, but so we've ha we've had these conversations with our senators and reps. Okay, the, Stephanie, um, we've discussed and just refresh my memory of why we don't do the town meeting later um, to ask for our budget after the final numbers come in. And what was the answer? <laughs> I, I don't recall it either, but I do know that we've had we've asked the question. Right. Um, and I don't know that there is a particular specific reason. Well, because I'm, the town ends on June 30th, their fiscal year, so maybe yeah. In this particular that. case, this, the the state budget was not approved until uh, towards the end of July. Yeah. Right. So, but that's why. Um, yeah. But the town has to why close we do our they budget. Have to have budget. Have the town that. has a June 30th fiscal year. They have to have a budget by uh, June 30th. 30th. Yeah. Fiscal year. Fiscal year July 1st. Right. Yeah, otherwise, if the district doesn't have an approved budget by July 1st, then we're on a 112th allocation and we have to work okay. with the state. So we have a motion uh, by Kathy, and it was seconded by Joe, uh, to uh, give the uh, 25000 back to uh, the town of Dudley. Then we'll vote on the exact figures after this um, vote. Any other discussion before we take the vote? Okay, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Okay. So Thank now you. we have a new set of figures. Yeah, so, so the Do you new, want to read them, uh, seeing I, you have them in front of you with the uh, twenty-five thousand deducted from our total and the, the, ass, the assessments? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so our revised budget total is now forty-nine million nine twenty five sixty-four. The assessment to Charlton is twelve million three fifty-nine oh ninety-one unchanged, and the assessment to Dudley is seven million. 848-983, a reduction of 25,000. Uh, 25, could we all have a copy of that? I'll send a, a, a PDF tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. So I'll entertain a motion now uh, to uh, approve our new uh, budget figures. So moved. Second. Discussion. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, just one last piece of news for the committee. Um, Mrs. Reed and I had a, ch a chance to view a new offering from First Student. Um, it's called the First Parent app. It's an application that parents can download to their phone, um, as well as uh, the district uh, offices could have it in, um, uh, access uh, via their computers. Um, it allows for real-time bus location. <coughs> and, um, uh, information about a, uh, estimated time of arrival um, at individual stops. Uh, the the big question that was out there after the because uh, it seemed like a, a pretty positive step to uh, you know get into actually the 21st century. Um, so one of the big questions we had was, uh, do we have reliable uh, access to GPS information? Otherwise, it would make all of this not worthwhile. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that the um, First student came back and said, "Yes, you know, we do have adequate, you know, that it would be worth our while." Uh, unfortunately, this app requires the district to use routing software, and we do not currently do that. Um, so I don't see this as feasible as uh, for something to be uh, done for this school year. Uh, however, it's something that we can include in our, our next bid contract, which is actually coming up this year. Um, there obviously will be a cost, so you know this. Whatever the cost of that information system is, um, will get factored. Uh, will get factored into the bid, obviously. Um, but I think it's uh, it's worth it. And uh, I know that there has been, you know, reluctance in the past um, from many communities to use routing software because oh, they don't know about this side road and that side road. But I tend to think that with all of the mapping that's gone on over the past decade that um, you know, Versatrans and, and, and those types of routing software companies are, are really up to, up to date and up to speed. Um, so I think it's something that you know, is uh, 
certainly worthwhile to consider uh, as we move forward. And I think by having the routing software, there may be some efficiencies that we can find in the routes um, that are not otherwise uh, obviously available. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you, Stephanie, <laughs> for bringing it up to our attention. Thanks. Okay, does that conclude? That's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, report of the Budget and Finance Subcommittee, and we probably have a new chair, Stephanie. Okay. Do we have anything, Stephanie, um, to report this evening? What we went over um, for the first meeting was just talking about the two and a half override. And. Um, Refresh my memory. I think we're going to wait till. Yeah, we were going to wait. Town administrator's next, isn't it next right. week? Yeah, I can. Um Sure, it was, um, we talked about a lot of things and primarily all around the topic of, the of course, override. the budget. We are the budget subcommittee and the override. Um, Mrs. Mrs. Reed was unanimously elected as chair and Mrs. Kabbalah as co-chair. <laughs> Very exciting. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> I told her she's going to be absent. <laughs> so, um, relative to the override, we didn't really go into a lot of depth because there's so many things that we have to um, iron out first with the towns, but some of the questions that are going to emerge that we at least put on the table are related to the um, I, what's going to be the ideal amount to ask for and what's how much is too much, but yet enough. We need to have it be enough to cover uh, the costs that we needed to cover to do things. And when the committee's going to have to think about things like do we want just enough to be able to have that annual 2% two, 2 increase, or do we want to also look at uh, stopping our, our consistent reliance upon reserves and school choice and things of that nature. And so there's, there's a lot of questions uh, out there that, that we just at least put on the table, certainly with, without any resolution. Um, I did uh, bring up the topic of, uh, cons of having the school committee consider engaging a communications strategist. And um, I think uh, Mrs. Reed, Mrs. Rabbit, and Ms. Santasi and I all saw I don't know if you saw Chris Horn. You saw uh, Christopher mm -hmm. Horn's presentation last year. Christopher Horn is, um, I'm not going to do a public service announcement for him. Um, he, he's probably best known as being the, um, the chief media strategist for Mayor Menino when, when the mayor was in, in power. And, um, but is considered to be, uh, you know, the, the main guy if you have a crisis in a school or if you have a, uh, somebody that you have to work with to, to get a message out there. He, he did a really great presentation, things I had never even thought of, about how to, uh, you know, make a concise and empowering message that goes to your community. People like me think we know, you know, like we, I can write a letter and everybody's going to say, oh, that's great, okay. But there are the, all these strategies that I wasn't aware of. Um, so um, Mr. Horan, in my communication with him, gave me the name of a school committee member in Barrington, Rhode Island, who, with whom he had worked last year. And I didn't anticipate her being quite as enthusiastic as she was, but um, I finally connected with her today, and it was really kind of like, you know, 5.30 this, this evening. Um, she, she had a lot of good things to say. Like I said, I won't go over them uh, because that's not um, a good use of our time, but I, suffice to say, um, you know, she, this is, she believes that he's the, he was the secret uh, ingredient that they needed in order to get their project was uh, was two building projects kind of co concurrently. Um, she also left gave me permission to to give her email to members of the committee if they wanted to reach out if you wanted to reach out yourselves and ask her any specific questions. But we talked about at the budget subcommittee meeting the possibility of having the committee consider giving me the authority to hire Chris up to with a price up to 7500 Chris, when he works with, with uh, different communities and different agencies, it's sometimes on an hourly basis where he's retained like an attorney where you can call him when you need him. Uh, other times it's a specific project. Um, and so, you know, I would ask the committee to at least discuss that tonight, if not take a vote on it, and give me the ability to bring him in. So when we have our first joint meeting of the towns and, and us, probably sometime in September, I'd like for him to, to invite him to that meeting so he can listen in and get a, kind of get a feel for what he's, what he's dealing with. I'll leave that out there. He's so really, we could take, he was expensive. 
and we wanted to put a cap on it at 7,500 because once you hit 10,000, you have to go out to bid. Right. So we would, we, would, we would put a stipulation that this is, as we thought, 7,500, he's $150 an hour, that's his fee. So we figured we don't want to get close to 10,000 and have a problem, you know, that we've gone too high. So but I think it's a good idea to have we a thought consultant. He, we thought he was good, but we just wanted to let you know that he's expensive and we put it, we're going to put a cap on it. Right. So we need a, a, a vote, and you said you'd like it this evening? I would love it, but if people are not comfortable with that, I understand. But I yeah. really would like that authority to go forward with okay. this. Okay. So do I have a motion? I'll make a, go ahead. Well, me, sure. make a motion to um, retain Mr. Hor Horan for 7500 Okay. Up do to, I have a second? Up to, to maximum, 7500 sorry. Up to. <laughs> so second. 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 Discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. And that was that was pretty much it. I, I would say, huh? That, it was a good meeting. We hour and a half or so. Um, we we did determine that we're going to meet on the third Thursdays of each month uh, at 9 a.m. in the district office, and we'll we'll post those meetings as always. Okay. So that brings us to consideration of requests for home instruction, policy IHBG. And Mr. Desto, you have a few. I do, Mrs. Evening. O'Coin. Thank you. And in addition to the five uh, that I provided for you in the package on Friday, which were four renewals and one new request, all of which I recommended approval of, um, I also received two additional requests since that time. And, so the, I, and you recommend all of them? I do. So now what I have is six renewals and one new request, and I, I've re, uh, reviewed their, their packets okay, and recommended Okay, so approval. I'll entertain a motion to approve the renewals first, the six renewals. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries, it's unanimous. I need a motion to approve the one new request. So moved. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion uh, carries. It's unanimous. Thank you. And you do have uh, a few others, don't you? No, that you, you got them all. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, I was thinking of the next line. Yep. Consideration of requests for non-resident enrollments. Mr. Desto. Thank you, Mrs. O'Coin. I, I do have two now. One is included in the additional memo tonight. And I, will take, I would ask the committee to take these separately. Uh, the first, as provided in the package on Friday, is a request uh, to enroll for, from a mom to enroll her son at Charlton Elementary to begin the year. The family currently resides in Southbridge, but they have presented me with a purchase and sale agreement and a letter from the builder indicating that they'll take occupancy of the home by the beginning, well before the beginning of the second term. So it's within so the realm of our policy right. and I recommend approval. So, so we'll, okay, so do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries it's unanimous, and then you have another. Yep, thank you. Um, the second one is uh, similar but different in that it is, a, it is a student who just recently completed her junior year. She's been with us since she was in kindergarten. Um, due to circumstances, the family has now had to move uh, and will be moving to Spencer on August 28th. So um, her parents have requested under policy JF that uh, the student would be able to finish her, would be able to do, complete her senior year at Shepherd Hill, and I do recommend your approval. I need a motion. So moved. Okay, second. I have a second. Discussion? Question and classification, is she considered a school choice student? Uh, no, actually, based under this policy, she mm -hmm. would be considered our student, and therefore would be, I believe, uh, as Contact. allocated to us by the state as if, an, as if a resident. Does that make sense? So essentially better than a school choice. And we've had this in the past. I know. Yes. We've yes. had this in the past. Any other discussion? And they've been providing their own transportation. Yes. 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 Anything else? Okay, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Next meeting dates for our school Mr. committee. Can I just interrupt? Because of the position up at Shepherd Hill, do you want to move to on us to approve that change in title? Actually, the, the, I'd like to start with the one before that, where I want to get at least the committee's input. Um, I've been notified that we have some recent move-ins. Students who've moved in who may require additional support. It's in the, it's in the memo tonight. The, the long and the short of it is that we, because of the timing of these um, 
of this information. We haven't had a chance yet to take a look at whether we can handle some of this from within or not. And, and as, as strange as it may seem, what I really need from the committee tonight is the ability to be able to hire, if necessary, substitute support to begin the year because by the time we meet on September 13th, um, I will know definitively what we need going forward, but I don't know that tonight. So you want to vote to, for us to give you the authorization? Yes. yes. To uh, do this. Okay, so. Well, I would make, why would it be substitute if you need them? Well, what we would do is we would, we would post it as a substitute and start the year with somebody, and I really can't post it as a permanent position until the committee gives us the authority, but I don't know if we need that yet. But so he I understand, <laughs> but let's say I apply. Are yep. you gonna keep me though really? Possibly. But it maybe is very not. Possible, but actually. maybe not. That's why you want yeah. to make a substitute in case you don't want to change the person. In case we didn't want to? In case you did, because otherwise I would just say give you the authority to hire, hire as needed. We've done that before. If you need them, why wouldn't you get a real person for the whole yeah. year? That, that's actually even better. I'm gonna make the motion that okay. we give the superintendent the the authority to hire as needed. Should I call them instructional assistants? What are they? Yes, that's exactly what Instructional they assistants. Yeah. And I need a second. Second. Discussion? Just mm -hmm. clarification. If we have students that are moving in yep. that have this on their IEP, it, that need needs to be met. Yes. So even for us to go forward, and I just want to kind of use it as an educational right. point, even for us to go forward, we would have to reevaluate a student, have team meetings, sit down and decide whether or not that support was going to continue to need. We're talking months out, yeah. so I agree with the I agree with the decision that we just need to hire people. We need to be effective with these students starting, so that we're on the right place and and be looking for the right people to start okay. off with. Um, that process can take time. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Thank you. And so thank you uh, for reminding us because it wasn't on the agenda, but right. I know about it. You did too, but we forgot. Well, so I, I wasn't certain that we needed a vote, but I, I appreciate yeah. that. And I, sure. Mrs. O'Coin, I also don't believe this needs a vote, but I do think the committee needs to know. Uh, in the memo tonight, um, we knew that when we lost Stephen Peters, uh, in more ways than one, we were not going to be able to replace him. And it, it's proven to be true that the, can't, the amount of... Um, candidates to fill the specific role of school psychologist at the high school uh, at this time in the summer. It just hasn't been there. And so Mr. Chaplin and I have been talking and we strongly believe that the best thing to do is to fill this position, which is not a new position, it's not an additional position, which is a change in um, how we post uh, for an adjustment counselor. Now what this does is enables us to get a talented person in place who can work with our <coughs> students. And so now we interestingly enough we would have more ability for more hours on support for students now that we would have two adjustment counselors mm -hmm. um, it would require us however to we haven't done the full analysis of how many hours of testing can be picked up within the district but there's almost definitely going to be some contracting out needed but we don't believe that that number of dollars is going to exceed the number of dollars we'll save in the difference in the salaries however okay. I think you should have a motion just to be sure because okay. it's a different job Okay. So I would make a motion that we change position at Shepherd Hill for this year. I'll just make it for just one year. Just for this year. From adjust to an adjustment counselor. Period. Let's second that. Okay. Discussion. Elaine. So question based on that, if you're hiring a person, are you hiring a person on a one year contract so that they're not going to be have an expectation that this position is going to go beyond a year so that we have an opportunity to sit back and look and analyze the cost difference between whether or not we need a yeah. psychologist and what those extra costs are going to be? Well, we, we thought about that, and I would rather not do that, actually, but it is close. But I, I would rather post this as a position, just a position, you get the best possible person. And as we um, evaluate it as we go along throughout the year, I think what we're going to find is that we can, we can probably you know, we may only need 0.3 or 0.4 or something like that, uh, psychologists in order to complete that testing. Which if that's the case, we may be better off sticking with this model in the long-term future. Um, so we think that the best thing to do is to post it as just a position. There's an understanding in our business that any time you're in the first year of a position, it's, it's always under evaluation on an annual basis. So people who, who take a position for the first year always understand that 
especially in districts where there's been there's an, a budget evaluation every year like ours, that uh, nothing is is forever. So that's that's an understood thing. The thing is, if there's someone in the district, he or she can apply for that because you have to post it through the union. So Correct. someone's at adjustment council say at Mason Road. I'm just making up a place. Yep. Technically, they could apply to come I out there. So you have to take the There should be an under. understanding, though, as Elaine did say that this is a one year because my motion said Kathy, one year, yeah, but still, as someone Kathy could post said, to transfer. Suppose someone in the district mm. applied for it, got it, they might be out of a job the next year. That's a good point. Yeah. I, I see, it's the only a tough way one. the only way you could probably get around is to call it an extended employment substitute. Oh, it's extended employment, then they can't. I don't think the apply. union can. The union doesn't bid for those. You could yeah. put it there, but then that person may not but want to come. Then you may not get the best either. Right, because they know it's only right. easier. Right, and we know. The the point is, this is not really a strong point. But we know that there isn't anybody in the district that is going to be qualified to bid into this particular okay. position. That being stated. As a concept, does that does that make it right or wrong? I don't know. Um, uh, I, I don't. I really think we. Well, if you do call it extended employment substitute, then they know it's for a year, and no one has to, will bid into it because it's only a year position. Then next year you can make it official if the person was good. If you want to keep them. but they wouldn't be put on their step. They would have to start at batches one. Remember, right. we've had that discussion before. Yeah. So I don't know if a person who's coming with experience would want to take bachelor's step one. Right. Or, That's or another any person consideration. Yeah. Yeah. Might want to have a position, not an extended employment. Well, that's either. right, and and we and you know the salary piece is part of it. Mm -hmm. That we would have our hands tied a little bit about that. Um, knowing the candidates that were there for the first opening, uh, I don't think that it's going to be somebody with a great deal of experience. However, I do think that more than one year mm -hmm. is a possibility. So, you know, again, I'm going to stick to my original recommendation that we post it just as a position and we evaluate it as the year goes along. I do I do understand where the committee's coming from. You mean position adjustment council? Is that what you mean? Yes. So that was my council. original motion, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll keep that original? But to remove the part about it being but for, for one, one year. year. Oh, oh, you don't want me to say that? No. I would prefer right, not to have that I withdraw your second? I'll withdraw a second. Um, then you just want me to say make um, a motion that we post, post for an adjustment, adjustment council for, for Shepherd Hill. Okay, and I have oh, a second again. And Elaine, <laughs> I, I guess I just have to um, come back to the point that I I appreciate it and I understand. I mean, we've worked very hard to get the one adjustment counselor, and I know that there is a tremendous need for it. I think we're in an unfortunate situation because Mr. Peters didn't leave. Um, you know, through retirement or through a pleasant circumstance, it's unfortunate. Um, we really have no way to judge the level of work that he did regarding testing and all of this type of work versus the work that he would be doing counseling students on an individual level. I'm uncomfortable putting this as a permanent position without a contingency on it because we, we, we need to go forward into the year ahead with an analysis. Um, contracting out services is, you know, is a, is a cost that we can't predict. I understand that might be a cost savings with it. I would really like the information and the numbers in order to support that decision. So I'm just kind of putting it out on the table. I'm too uncomfortable with it, putting a position that I know that we need. And if I felt comfortable that we would be able to, you know, serve two masters going forward with the next budget. I know we're no, we, we know that the next budget is going to be more difficult than the one that we just did. It, it's difficult to support it without a contingency on it, from, from just in my opinion. Well, I'm just going to throw it out. If we don't make this motion, there'll be nobody there because we don't have a psychologist, so we have to have someone there. So the Adjustment Council, when anyone is hired for the first three years, your employer will, you can be let go for no reason, for any reason you want. So if that person could walk on water, if we don't need them next year, the person is gone so there's no we're no strings attached here but if we don't fill it we will have nobody in that position next week if there's we nobody decide we need a psychologist instead next year then that job is cut. I, I understand it but the conversation that we've had here as far as as far as what we're what we're publicizing what people's expectations are coming forward you know to apply for the job in going forward yes we do need to we do need to replace you know a person that's going to that's difficult to replace. I understand that. I know that this is a, a very sound second alternative, 
but with a, without a, a clear thing of this is the role that we're going forward, um, you know, we need to see how the year works out as to whether or not we're going forward. I'm not, I'm just not comfortable with it. So I, I understand that we have to replace somebody. Anyone else would like to <laughs> add? No? So all in favor of Catherine's motion? Okay. Opposed? All right. So it is six, a uh, five one. A Sandy. And just as a motion. follow up, I'd like to say how much we're going to miss Mr. Peters and more. We are graceful and what a travel tragedy for the district. It is. It's tough to put it into words. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be hard to replace what he has Absolutely. really has done for our district for 27 years. Okay, now we can go to the next meeting dates. <laughs> um, our regular school committee meetings, Wednesday, September 12th, and that will be at Shepherd Hill Regional High School. I think it's actually the 13th. I think that's a mistake. <laughs> Is that a mistake? Right. Is that a mistake, everybody? Yes, it is. Okay. I apologize for that. It's actually the 13th, so Wednesday, September 13th, and it will be at Shepherd Hill Regional High School, and that will be at 7 p.m. Next meeting, Wednesday, September, I hope this is right, <laughs> the 27th. That is right. Yes, um, At Charlton Middle School, and that is at 7 p.m. Our budget and finance subcommittee Thursday, September 20th. 21st. Should be the 21st. <laughs> All right. It's the 21st. I'm going to get a C on this one. You are. <laughs> a D. <laughs> a D, D plus. Um, Thursday, September 21st, and that will be in the district office at 9 a.m. Uh, wage and benefits subcommittee for the nurses negotiations yeah. Thursday. August 17th, and we'll be in the district office at 9 a.m., and that's tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, future agenda items, FY 2018 budget, and that's the strategic plan. Uh, anyone else with future agenda items, Elaine? Is it possible that we can set the dates for the coming school year as far as our meeting dates with the holidays? Just um, I calendars are starting to okay. fill up. I'd we just like to be able to make sure we don't have any conflicts. Okay, so we'll do that for next time. Anything else? Okay, I'm sure we'll come up with others. Um, and now we will be entering into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation or collective bargaining if an open session may have detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and only to reconvene into regular session to take votes if need be and then adjourn me. Okay, now I will take a roll call for executive yes. session. Yes. Ray, yes. And Stephanie? Okay, we're now in executive session.